Good morning everyone. So today's lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture that on behavior management. So in the previous lecture, uh, we had discussed about the behavior of a child in the dental setting. How will you rate the behavior on the Frankel's behavior rating scale and Wright's behavior classification. Then uh, the factors that influence the child's behavior which includes the factors under the control of the dentist, factors under the control of the parent and other factors that influence. So on today's lecture we will be discussing about the other factors that are responsible and the behavior management techniques. So the intended learning outcomes uh, will be the same as I have discussed in the previous lecture. So this uh, lecture we will be discussing about uh, define behavior management and discuss in details about the various behavior management techniques in children and apply the various behavior management techniques in the child management. So first we will be learning about the terminolo terminologies like behavior management, what is behavior modification and what is behavior shaping. So first coming to behavior management, it is defined as the means by which a dental team effectively and efficiently performs a dental treatment or a procedure and thereby instills a positive attitude. While behavior modification is defined as an attempt to alter the human behavior and emotion in a beneficial way according to the laws of learning or behavior shaping. Uh, it's a procedure which develops behavior by reinforcing a successful or successive approximation of the desired behavior until the desired behavior comes into being. So all these terminologies has different understanding or a definition. So you should remember the different the difference between all the three on behavior management, behavior modification and behavior shaping. So moving on to the classification of behavior management which can be classified as pharmacological or non-pharmacological. So as I have discussed already that we will be dealing on the non-pharmacological behavior management techniques. So in the non-pharmacological behavior management techniques are communication, behavior shaping or modification that includes your tell show do technique, modeling, contingency management, retraining, parental presence or absence, systematic desensitization, voice control, protective stabilization and home. While the pharmacological behavior management techniques include your conscious sedation, deep sedation and general anesthesia. So according to AAPD that is American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry in the year 2002-03 they have classified the behavior management into basic and advanced behavior management. So under the basic behavior management we have the communicative management, parental presence or absence and nitrous oxide sedation. So in the communicative management you have the voice control, non-verbal communication, tell show do, positive reinforcement and distraction. Under the advanced behavior management we have home technique that is hand over mouth, exercise, protective stabilization, sedation and general anesthesia. So the first in the behavior management is communication. So as we know communication is a foremost objective for treating children which may be verbal or non-verbal. So verbal um, includes either you are uh, either the dentist or uh, is communicating with the child verbally in the form of either asking the child about his clothing or commenting about his clothes or um, asking a child about his pet if he has any about his school asking um, the child about the activities that he does in school about his friends siblings so these are the ones which are verbal uh, communication while the uh, 
the communication should be within a short distance and at the eye level um the child should be greeted uh, in a warm and friendly manner and ask open ended questions uh, about his likes and dislikes open ended questions like yes or no no sentenced uh, questions uh, the movement should be slow and uh, smooth while in the non verbal communication uh it should be which is a multi sensory it should be in the form of either smile which the doctor or the dentist shows to the child or an eye contact with the dentist uh with the child a stroking of the arm of the child this again forms a communication between the dentist and the patient so moving on to the strategies of communication uh for uh, making a communication with a child in should be there is establishment of communication establishment of a communicator and message clarity has to be done so in the establishment of communication uh, the first objective of successful management of a young child is based on the communication so communication may be verbal or non verbal and uh, it should also be based on the age of the child so involving a child in the conversation relaxes the child and thus enables the dentist to perform or uh, to treat or to do the necessary treatment for the child so the verbal communication especially in young children can be uh, also uh, initiated along with a complimentary comment you know, of their dressed or maybe the interest uh, what they like they dislike about their friends about their uh, siblings about their interest in the form of play so next is the establishment of communicator so the dental team must be aware of the roles who is supposed to be speaking or communicating uh, with the child Uh, in the uh, dental clinic at different levels uh, the communication should always uh, be a uh, from one source so this avoids any confusion to the child so the dental team should be aware of the roles and where they are supposed to communicate with the child um, so if the dentist in the presence of the dentist the dental assistant takes a passive role and uh, the dentist is the one who does the conversation or communication with the child uh, if the parents are present in the operatory then again they are given prior instructions as to not uh, speak or talk to the child or communicate the child until wanted or asked by the dentist because, because this again creates some confusion uh, between the uh, the child and the parents and the dentist next we have the message uh, clarity so the communication is actually is a complex multi sensory uh, process which includes the transmitter the medium and the receiver so uh, the transmitter is the dentist the medium medium is the spoken words and the receiver is the child so the message should be understood in the same way as it is being told to the uh, told uh, told or conveyed to the uh, by the transmitter to the receiver so it should not be manipulated um use of any uh, euphemisms or second language should be included in the communication because these children are small and they will not understand the complex words so euphemism or euphemisms or word substitute uh, substitutes can be used and this helps to improve the clarity of the message to the young patient so we have some, some words uh, substitutes of the dental terminology like uh, for rubber dam we can say a uh, raincoat rubber raincoat for a rubber dam clamp a tooth button of uh, for a rubber dam frame is a road Uh, the co coat rack for a sealant it's a tooth paint for topical fluoride fluoride gel we can say 
uh, substitute with a cavity fighter for an airway air syringe is a wind gun for a water syringe we can substitute with a water gun suction we can substitute with vacuum cleaner for an alginate word substitute uh, uh, can be used as a pudding or for a high speed the word substitute that we can use as a whistle so now moving on to the non verbal communication it's the reinforcement and guidance of behavior through contact uh, contact posture any facial expressions and body um, body language so the objective here is to enhance the effectiveness of the other communicative management techniques uh, and to gain and maintain the child's attention and compliance so the non verbal communication is by body language either by smiling contact showing concerns or touching the child smiling uh, or giving uh, him a hug or showing some expressions of feeling without speaking so it is indicated in any uh, in any patient but uh, and contraindicated in none next we move on to the tell show do technique or tsd so the tell show do technique it's a behavior shaping technique which was given by adelston in the year 1915 so the tell show uh, tell show do technique in which the tell is the verbal explanation of the procedure in the phrase appropriate to the child's development which the dentist tells so uh, any explanation that needs to be given or in the form in the phrase um, according to the child's developmental level is told to the child then show show is demonstration of whatever you have told the child uh, Uh, is uh, demonstrated demonstration of the patient of the visual auditory auditory olfactory and the tactile aspects of procedures is carefully defined uh, and a non threatening setting then do do is without deviation from the explanation and the demonstration completion of the procedure so so in do what you oh, you are supposed to do is you what you have told the child and you have shown the child you are going to do it on the child there should be no deviation from your tell and show the objective being uh, to teach the child the important aspects of dental visit and familiarize the patient with the dental setting shape the patient's response to procedures through desensitization and well described uh, expectations indicated in any patient contraindications none next we move on to modeling uh, the synonym being observational learning or vicarious uh, learning it's a behavior modification technique it it involves a patient to observe one or more individuals which are the models and these models may be live models or any uh, uh, filmed models which can be shown to the child uh, and which demonstrate the appropriate behaviors in a particular situations so the models as i have told it may be a uh, live models or film models and uh, live models can be coping or mastery type of models so the coping models would show their fears and difficulty with the modeling situations while the mastery models would show mastery over the modeling situations so the objective uh, being uh, stimulation of acquisition of new behaviors so you are basically stimulating a new behavior uh, which is what the dentist requires in the uh, upcoming appointments from the uh, child who is observing uh, sibling or any other models facilitation of the behavior already present in an appropriate manner then disinhibition of inappropriate behavior due to fear and extension extinctions of fear so by seeing another child or a model the 
child will have reduced or his fear will be uh, there will be extinction of his fear or uh, his fears will be reduced by seeing the other the model so modeling helps in that behavior management so the requirements of modeling is attention retention you need to the child needs to have an attention and see the model then retention retain whatever is being shown to him motoric reproduction reinforcement and motivation the factors affecting the modeling would is observer's state of arousal the characteristics of the model and expectation expected consequences of a behavior which may be a reward or a punishment so moving on to the contingency management so the contingency management is based on the operant conditioning theory of uh, skinners and it's a uh, it's a method of modifying the behavior by presentation or withdrawal of the reinforcers so this reinforcers are the pleasant or unpleasant uh, stimuli which are present or um the reinforces increases the frequency of the desired behavior so these reinforces may be positive reinforces or negative reinforces so reinforcement may be positive or re negative reinforcement it might be omission or time out and punishment so we will be discussing about it in the next uh, slides so contingency management includes positive reinforcement negative reinforcement omission or time out and punishment the objective being to reinforce the desired behavior until the desired behavior comes into play and the indication being used in any patient contraindications none so first we will be discussing about the positive reinforcements so the positive reinforcement is done uh, through presentation of a reinforcer in um after a successful completion of a dental appointment by the child so presentation of a present pleasant stimulus to increase the probability of the child behavior so if positive reinforcement means if a child has actually accepted the treatment um, uh, without any uh, problem or he's not uh, he's got his treatment done so the way of appreciating the behavior of the child is by either social reinforcers material reinforcers or or activity uh, reinforcers so uh, the social reinforcers in the form of a pat on the back or the shoulder shaking hand with the child verbal praises in the uh, praise uh, praise in the presence of a parent so this again will make Uh, the child happy and this will be a positive reinforcement for him to come in the further next appointments the next is the material reinforces so if a child is cooperating and good in his behavior during any of his treatment um, during the appointment so you uh, we should uh, reinforce his um, by giving him or by uh, material reinforcers like a uh, a uh, drawing kit or toys or a uh, you know, favorite cartoon stickers or even giving him a balloon which we use it in our pediatric clinics uh, activity in the form of letting the child watch his favorite uh, tv show or playing games or even um, playing games or movie um, for some time which is of his interest but we need to remember that uh, these are rewards not bribes so rewards are given after the procedure while bribes are offered in anticipation of a cooperative behavior so bribes are told before the completion of procedure if the child is told that you will be given a gift or a balloon uh if you behave then that is bribing but reward is given once after the completion of the appointment in after completion of all the treatment in that particular appointment if the child behaves properly then we are either uh, giving him 
with um, a, a pat or shaking hand or verbal praises or you giving any gifts like a balloon or a sticker or any uh, toys or by letting him watch his favorite TV or games. So the negative reinforcement is withdrawal of an unpleasant stimuli to increase the probability of the behavior. So in this, you uh, if uh, if example, if the child does not like the doctor or the dentist using a uh, air rotor handpiece, then that again can be replaced by the use of a spoon excavator or another instrument which he which he is accepting. Uh, so that the child will accept the dental uh, treatment in the next appointment. So that is the reason it is said that withdrawal and of an unpleasant stimulus. So the unpleasant stimulus over here is the uh, handpiece that is the aerota handpiece to increase the probability of the behavior. So once we withdraw the unpleasant stimulus and we replace it with a spoon excavator, the behavior of the child will be improved and the child will be coming or will be accept, accepting the treatment in the next appointment. Next we have is time out or omission that is withdrawal of a pleasant stimulus to decrease the probability of a uh, behavior that is uh, in this what happens uh, if the child is not cooperating for the treatment so what do you do with you withdraw a pleasant stimulus the pleasant stimulus over here is removing if the child is come with a toy then you take the toy away from the child and if the child the parent is present in the operatory you send the patient uh, the parent out of the operatory so this pleasant stimulus if it is withdrawn this decreases the prob probability of the behavior that uh, which is preventing the child from getting the treatment done Next is punishment. Uh, it's a mean of increasing the frequency of a desired behavior by the presentation of an aversive stimuli. So presenting an aversive stimulus to decrease the probability of a behavior. So the aversive stimuli is either physical restraints, home technique. So uh, if the child is not behaving or letting the treatment to be done in that appointment then uh, you can present the aversive stimuli the aversive stimuli being the physical restraints or home technique next type of behavior management is the retraining so retraining uh, which is similar to uh, behavior shaping and used for children with previous uh, bad dental experiences or with negative behavior due to other uh, reasons. And this is designed to fabricate uh, positive values to replace the negative values. So if a child has a positive, um, if a child has a negative behavior that will be replaced by a positive values by retraining. So the objective here is to fabricate positive values to replace the negative behavior uh, that can be developed. So the approaches are either by avoidance, de-emphasis and uh, substitution and distraction. So avoidance is a shift to a relatively new and painless treatment modality. So so in avoidance what happens that if uh, consider if a child who is like three years of age or four years of age who has come to you for a dental treatment and who has a bad dental experience previously so uh, this bad dental experience has to be converted or it needs to be shifted to a positive or good behavior or positive value so what you do instead of a most extensive treatment on that same day you can give a treatment that is um, least invasive and can wait for the uh, patient to uh, come up to the age and uh, 
do the extensive treatment later so the patient will have um, have expectations ha which are revised and retained so with time he will at least have uh, he'll grow up and his fear will be shifted uh, from his past dental experiences so avoidance is shift to a relatively new and painless treatment modality so now this is what avoidance is next we have de-emphasis and substitution so substitution is uh, of one procedure um, procedure more anxiety provo provoking with another which is less anxiety pro provoking so you are basically substituting a procedure which is more anxiety provoking for the child to a procedure which is less anxiety provoking like if a treatment that needs a, an aerator um, uh, hand piece but if the child is anxious when you are using it so that can be substituted the hand piece can be substituted with a hand instrument so this again will be less anxiety provoking to the child and he will agree um, the child with agree with the treatment and he will accept the treatment uh, the child will accept that you have recognized and uh, his dislikes and uh, you are prepared to help him so this will again do uh, help him in retraining his past bad or negative behavior to the positive one next is distraction so how do you do distraction either by storytelling or repetitive words of encouragement or keep praising him during the tre dental treatment or procedures so that he will be uh, he will uh, you give him the encouragement encouraging words and he will cooperate with you for the treatment another form of uh, distraction is audio visual audio visual aids or uh, audio or audio visual aids uh, distraction it's a technique of diverting the child's attention from what may be perceived as an unpleasant stimuli so you're basically diverting the child's attention from his treatment uh, attention towards his oral cavity to something which is pleasant so this may be in the form uh, or you can even uh, the distraction can be in the form of uh, short breaks during every procedure if you're storytelling or counting numbers or you're playing with him or even singing a song for him uh, can help in the uh, distraction of the child counting numbers again helps them uh, best helps us as we have also seen in our uh, clinics that uh, while giving local anesthesia when we count they do sit without uh, crying or um, uh, they are actively participating in the treatment so the objective being uh, decreases the perception of unpleasantness and averts the negative behavior indication it can be used in any child and contraindicated in none the types of distraction may be audio uh, distractions or audio visual distractions so next we move on to the uh, parental presence or absence so here uh, this is used to gain uh, the cooperation of treatment uh, the objective being that is gain and maintain the child uh, attention and compliance uh, avert any negative or avoidance behaviors uh, to establish appropriate dentist and child roles and enhance effective communication among the three and minimize the anxiety uh, the indications it is used with any patient contraindications in patients uh, in the parents who are unwilling to support during the treatment next we move on to the uh, systematic desensitization so it's a uh, behavior modification technique which was given by joseph um, J joseph wool a patient learns to substitute an appropriate or uh, adaptive emotional response for an inappropriate or maladaptive behavior so in this you have two important elements that is the gra uh, gradual exposure of the child to his or her fear and induced state of incompatibility with 
is a her fear so in desensitization is you gradually expose the child from the least uh, painful to the most painful procedures instead of suddenly just imposing on him the most painful procedures which will lead the uh, to the child not cooperating in the dental treatment and hence his treatment will be uh, not done hence uh, so this gradual exposure uh will make him ready to take the next level procedure without much apprehension apprehension so in the dental setting what you have to do uh, procedures that are needed in the initial to the final appointments are agreed arranged in a, in a hierarchy from the least painful ones to the most painful ones so like as a child when it uh, he comes to the dental clinic so in the first appointment or when the child comes in the first time to the clinic we generally do not do any form of treatment because uh this will Uh, make the child fearful of the dental scenario and he might not turn up for the next further appointment so if a child who is young very young and uh, uh, who is apprehensive about the treatment or about the dental dentist in the first one or two appointments uh, there should be no treatment that should be done so in the first appointment maybe oral examination can be done Uh, then the patient should be shown the dental operatory after which uh, he should be uh, introduced to the dental operatory the dentist and the other people who are there in the uh, dental operatory uh, how do we take radiographs maybe in the second second third appointments radiograph can be done uh, then after which in the next appointment or uh, um uh, 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 mm preventive treatment can be done in the next appointments then after that uh, maybe a restorative treatment can be done but again using a hand uh, instrument and later at the end when you see that the child has reduced fear then can um, the treatment that is um, your uh, painful treatment or treatment with an aerotor can be started so this will help in making um, uh, there will be a gradual exposure of the child to the next level of procedure and he will appreciate and there will be less apprehension in the child next we move on to the implosion therapy in which uh, there is sudden flooding with a barrage of stimuli which have affected adversely and the child has no other choice but to face the stimuli until the negative response disappears so in implosion therapy the child is suddenly you either there is implo- um, sudden flooding or you uh, either you do voice control or home technique or physical restraints until the child's behavior is under control and his negative uh, responses or the child's negative responses disappears so the voice control is uh, control alteration of voice volume tone or pace to influence and direct patient's behavior so the objective is uh, the main objective of here is to gain the patient's attention and compliance uh, avoid or avoid any negative behavior uh, of the child and uh, establish an appropriate child um, and adult roles the precautions that needs to be taken is uh, it is an act not a manifestation of anger so in this we cannot show anger to the child but it is just an act of you know, showing or altering the voice volume um, so that the child's behavior is influenced parental consent is uh, needed in um, the voice control because some parents may not like uh, the dentist showing or uh, um, doing voice control on the child so consideration is voice control uh, and facial control Uh, you need to con- uh, you need to control have a control on the voice and the facial control you cannot show frustration to the child and uh, the voice should only be altered uh, the child should see dentist face the dentist is placed so that all his facial features are easily seen by the child 
so in this what happens the um, child and the dentist sit face to face and the child should be seeing uh, the dentist face when the dentist is doing the face uh, the voice control facial expression communicates even when there is a language barrier so even though if there is a language barrier between the dentist and the child but facial expression does um, make him understand or makes the child understand that uh, he is not happy uh, with the behavior what the child is doing and he needs to understand or he needs to control his behavior so voice control is a certain command of stop crying and pay attention to me and maybe initial measures of further communication so it is indicated in patients who are crying loudly and uncontrollably between the age group of 3 to 6 years and it's contraindicated in special children next we move on to the protective stabilization protective stabilization is um, uh, the synonym of medical immobilization treatment immobilization or restraining so it's a restriction of patient's freedom of movement with or without patient's permission to decrease the risk of injury while allowing safe completion of treatment so in protective stabilization you have you are supposed to restrict the patient's movement patient movement it may be with the permissions of the pa patient's permission or without the patient's permission and this is done so that the risk of injury to the patient or to the dentist or to the assistant is reduced uh, uh, and the treatment is completed safely this needs parental consent so um, parental consent over here is very very important uh, uh, considerations uh, alternative behavior guidance modalities uh, are when you cannot use then the end at the end you have to use the protective stabilization if the dental needs of the patient that he needs protective stabilization and then only he let the treatment done then we have to give protective stabilization effect, effect of quality of dental care emotional development if the child is not emotionally developed then again we have to use protective stabilization or medical or physical considerations the objective uh, of uh, physical uh, or protective stabilization is uh, reduce or eliminate the untoward movement so if the child has continuously moved uh, moved or physical movement during the uh, treatment this reduces the un, uh, um, or untoward movement of the child and hence safety of the patient and the dentist uh, uh, maintains and uh, protect the child uh, dental team and the parent and facilitate the delivery of the dental um, quality dental care indications if the parents patients who are uh, require immediate diagnosis or limited treatment that is a physical disability or lack of maturity it is also indicated in a child or dentist risk without use of prote protective immobilization so if a child or a dentist who are at the risk uh, because of the um, immobilize or because of the uh, continued mobility of the child uh, then we have to use the protective immobilization contraindications in cooperative patient if the patient cannot be immobilized safely due to associated medical if the child has any other medical problems then it should it's not it's contraindicated any physical or uh, psychological trauma due to previous protective stabilization then it is contraindicated lengthy appointments again protective stabilization is contraindicated the precautions that needs to be taken is asthmatic patients have compromised respiratory functions it should be avoided in asthmatic patients tightness and duration of uh, stabilization must be monitored the stabilization around the extremities or chest again has to be monitored and seen uh, terminated immediately if the child is experiencing severe stress uh, psychological trauma
So, the patient's record also uh, the, the dentist has to record a few things that is um, before the protective stabilization that they should have the informed consent from their parents. Uh, the type of stabilization uh, they are using in the child, indication for the stabilization, the duration of application of stabilization for the child, the frequency of stabilization and uh, behavior evaluation or rating during the stabilization. So this will help in the next appointment again when the patient is uh, coming. So this will provide the information or the record uh, and uh, for the for the treatments. So the type of restraints that can be used are oral restraints, body, extremities or head. So the oral, uh, you can use mouth props, padded, wrapped tongue blades, rubber or plastic bite blocks. For the body, we can uh, papo's board, triangular sheets, pedi wraps, bean bag, dental chair inserts or safety belts and extra assistance can also be used. For the extremities, posy straps, velcro straps, towel or tape, extra assistant and for the head is forearm support, head positioner or an extra assistant to stabilize the head of the child. Classification of physical uh, and me mechanical restraints, so which can be uh, papoose board, triangular sheets, pedi wraps, bean bags, uh, safety belts, towels and tapes and extra assisted, uh, posy straps, velcro straps, towels and tapes and extra assistant. Uh, then mechanical, um, some physical and mechanical restraints again are for body support, head protector, plastic bowel, extra assistant. And the fourth type is the mouth props, mouth props, padded wrap, tongue blades, rubber bite blocks. So the, uh, we will be discussing little about these uh, physical restraints or the types of restraints, uh, pedi wraps. These are used um, in pediatric arm immobilizer falling, uh, falling cleft pallet surgery or during x-ray exposures, children with self-injuries habit. Uh, it's used on, uh, placed on the pre-positioned chair with velcro which is fastened around there legs and arms to avoid any movement of the uh, movement and the advantage is that it's fast and easy to use just simple to wrap around the uh, arms and it limits the arm movements the disadvantage is does not have support or a backboard and high cost next is mouth props it's used in disabled patient or protect the patient and the practitioner from injury injury like a bite injury if the patient is not opening his mouth or suddenly closes his mouth this also improves the accessibility and visibility of the dentist uh, uh, how do we use it so the dentist wiggles or places the bite block or the mouth prop in between the back teeth so uh, don't insert between the front teeth, uh, the wider portion is in the posterior or the back tooth region while the narrower is towards the anterior tooth region. The advantage being it's inexpens uh, inexpensive and has good accessibility and visibility. Next is the papoose board. It's used for immobilizing the body. Child is placed on the flat board and then it uh, uh, wrapped around the straps are wrapped around the middle upper and the lower parts of the body and less than 60 seconds is less alarming so the advantage is that it is quickly applied in finite adjustments with um, generous velcro brands uh, brand fasteners are used the disadvantage is it may be traumatizing at uh, adds terror to the already stressful situations. The advantages are if patients who require diagnosis or treatment and cannot cooperate due to lack of maturity, it can be used in such patients or when safety of the patient or staff is at risk, again it can be used or as a patient part of treatment during conscious sedation. Uh, the disadvantages or it cannot be used uh, the physical restraints cannot be used when there is no available informed consent from the parents. If this 
previous physical or psychological trauma if any the child is having respiratory problems like asthma or uh, severe distress syndrome if the patient is already stressful situations non sedated patients with non emergent treatment requiring lengthy procedures next we have the aversive conditioning that is flooding or response prevention or restraining in this the dentist exposes the child to the anxiety provoking stimuli but prevents the child from expressing avoidance responses so he learns that the avoidance response is inappropriate and will not work and the anxiety provoking stimuli are less anxious than imagined the objective of here is to gain attention of a highly oppositional child so the child who is highly op oppo uh, opposing to the dental treatment so this again gains attention to of the child uh, to establish communication between the child and cooperation is obtained for the uh, for the course of the treatment so the modes are hand over mouth exercise of phys and physical restraints so the hand over mouth exercise which was introduced by Evangeline Jordan uh, is most widely used because of its recent legal implication. Uh, it's not widely used uh, because of its uh, uh, legal implication. It can be used only when all the other management, uh, behavior management techniques have failed. So it is also known as aversive conditioning or emotional surprises. So the objective is to gain the ch uh, child's attention. to eliminate any uh, inappropriate behavior uh, avoidance of the child behavior avoidance or avoidance of the treatment uh, of uh, the child and to ensure that the child's safety in delivering of the quality dental treatment has been obtained so this again ha helps us in um, uh, providing us with a good behavior of the child so the prerequisite is parents must know ahead of the time of the probability that this type of behavior shaping may be used uh, in the child so the parents should be informed informed prior to the uh, prior to doing the hand over mouth exercise or basically a consent needs to be uh, taken from the parent they should be otherwise it it's like a surprise for the parents also and some parents may not be may not like the behavior management technique Uh, it's indicated in uh, normal children who are momentarily hysterical defined children with sufficient maturity to obey commands like a child between the age of 3 to years 3 uh, years of age who can understand and who can obey commands it can should be used in in that age group children younger than 3 they will not be able to understand or uh, um understand the commands or the requirements by the dentist and uh, they are in the pre cooperative stage so they will not understand the uh, what the dentist needs um contraindication is uh, if the child is in the pre cooperative period if the child is mentally or physically challenged he will again have um, he will not understand uh, the commands which are given by the dentist and will not be able to follow it if the child is a mouth breather then home technique should not be used because if you are closing the mouth then he will have difficulty in breathing or um, uh, parents consent if uh, cannot be obtained uh, if the parents consent cannot be obtained then it should be avoided or it should be it's contraindicated so the procedure how do we do hand over mouth exercise uh, or, so after determining once the ch uh, ch uh, the dentist determines the child's behavior he firmly places his hand on uh, his hand on the child's mouth and with verbal outburst uh, outburst is stopped the dentist faced is brought close to the child and talked in uh, and talk is directed into the child's ear so uh, and the dentist then tells the child that if he cooperates then only the child the hand will be removed from his uh, mouth um, so
so when the child cooperates the hand is removed the patient is re-evaluated if the disruptive behavior continues the dentist places the hand again over the child's mouth and tells him to cooperate again this routine is repeated until the child's behavior changes uh, uh, sufficiently to allow the uh, or to begin the treatment so once the child cooperate he should be compli compli uh, complimented so what should be done the thing is the dentist uh, if the child is not cooperating with the treatment the, chi the dentist has to firmly place his hand over the mouth of the child and then verbal outburst how the uh, the dentist brings his mouth face close to the you know, child's ear and tells him to cooperate that if he does not cooperate uh, the hand will not be removed so once the patient cooperates the, the dentist removes the hand and if the child again uh, begins his disruptive behavior then again the hand over mouth is repeated again until the uh, treatment is uh, until the child uh, allows the treatment to be done and uh, once the treatment is done the child should be complicated uh, com complimented for his good uh, behavior so uh, applying the principles of psychology and behavior management so the child psychology theory and behavior management uh, can be applied like the psycho social theory is by um, or industry versus inferiority uh, by communication cognitive theory or animism cent uh, centration is by communication or euphemisms and distraction observational th learning theory is by modeling operant conditioning uh, theory is contingency management or parental presence and absence and classical conditioning theory is by retraining so these are few of the uh, applications of the child psychology principles uh, uh, with behavior management uh, tech, uh, behavior management technique so we have finished our um, behavior management uh, which is the non pharmacological behavior management techniques um, i have also updated in the google classroom uh, like um, uh, MCQ on the behavior management. We will be discussing more about the behavior management. So the next lecture will be on your behavior management 3 that is on your pharmacological behavior management. So thank you for uh, listening. Stay safe, stay home and stay safe. Thank you.